income, growth, and security. The winning strategy for stock market success. We've always contended that the adage, the higher the risk, the higher the return, doesn't always hold true in the stock market. In the current landscape, safety is paramount, perhaps more so than ever before. Consider this. Nearly 40% of Russell 2000 RTY companies are operating at a loss, and that's without even factoring in the impacts of a potential recession. Defining quality isn't simple. We view quality as a blend of a robust balance sheet, positive earnings, avoiding corporations in the red, and the capacity for long-term growth, ideally within secular trends. Regarding sustainable growth, we favor companies benefiting from economic reshoring, healthcare entities, agriculture firms, leveraging an unusually robust replacement cycle, select real estate companies experiencing anti-cyclical demand, and ultra-stable players in the consumer staples realm. As we'll delve into in this, prioritizing safety doesn't necessarily equate to sacrificing returns. That's why we've meticulously curated a model portfolio comprising top-tier companies characterized by both safety and quality, promising income, potential capital gains, and a sense of security. Big shout out to Seeking Alpha for sponsoring our video and its analytics. Make sure to get your 14 day free trial of Seeking Alpha. Premium via the link in the description. You can only get the 14 day trial through the link below. So make sure to check them out guys. Why prioritizing safety matters. Following the release of my 2024 outlook, Bloomberg's John Authors penned an article addressing the state of US firms. The article highlighted a consistent decline in financial robustness among U.S. companies, with a fleeting recovery post the 2008 global financial crisis. Evaluation through Altman Z scores, gauging bankruptcy probabilities, reflects a notable descent. In the past century, over half of public firms appeared financially sturdy by this measure. Currently, however, that figure has nosedived to less than 10%. Essentially, the era of low interest rates has birthed zombie companies struggling to generate adequate profits to cover interest expenses. Nearly 20% of U.S. companies fall into this category, raising concerns about potential misallocation of capital and flawed investments. Approximately 40% of Russell 2000 companies share this predicament, as I mentioned earlier in this piece. The positive side is that corporate treasurers have been successful in securing long-term debt amid the extended period of low interest rates, effectively preventing bankruptcies. However, there's a concerning trend. The average time remaining on high-yield bonds has decreased. This poses challenges for companies dealing with higher rates, especially if rates continue to rise. Given these circumstances, there's a sense of urgency. The Federal Reserve needs to act swiftly in combating inflation. If left unchecked, inflation could seriously harm credit quality. Some argue that such damage might be necessary to tackle inflation without risking a resurgence of higher prices the moment the Fed eases its measures. We've identified six, well, technically seven stocks that meet certain criteria. Well, seven stocks were identified, but one of them, Rexford Industrial Realty, RXCR, has a stock price history only going back to 2013. Let's dive into the breakdown of these identified stocks. From the overview, it's evident that this selection leans heavily towards residential real estate. That's logical, given that it's a highly secure sector within real estate, carrying limited demand risks. Notable inclusions are Realty Income, O, known as the Triple Net Lease Retail King, Prologis, PLD, a significant player in the industrial sphere, and Alexandria Real Estate, R, focused on healthcare-centered office real estate. These stocks offer yields ranging from 2.9% to 5.7%, 
with annual dividend growth rates spanning from 2.3% to 12.6%. Basically, when it comes to buying into safety, investors don't have to compromise on either yield or growth. What's impressive about these REITs is their track record. They've not only weathered every major economic downturn in recent decades, but have also bolstered their balance sheets over time, offering investors an exceptional risk-to-reward scenario. Looking back to 2005, an equally weighted portfolio comprising these six stocks has averaged an 8.8% yearly return. This includes enduring a hefty 62% drop during the tumultuous times of the great financial crisis. Think about it. A $10,000 investment would have burgeoned to nearly $50,000 without any extra capital injections. And if investors had added just $200 per month to their initial $10,000, the final balance would have soared to nearly $180,000. That's a profit of around $130,000 on an investment totaling close to $50,000. Over this period, the Vanguard Real Estate Index Fund ETF shares, VNQ, returned only 6.4% per year. And here's the kicker. This model portfolio showed a standard deviation of 21.8% during that time, which is actually lower than VNQ's 22.3%. In simpler terms, the risks were lower while the returns were higher, all thanks to just six stocks, most of which operate with conservative business models. Even when the great financial crisis hit, this portfolio excelled, surpassing the VNQ ETF by about 630 basis points concerning the maximum drawdown. Over the past five years, the returns have gotten closer, aligning with a similar volatility pattern. This could be attributed to the massive spike in REITs following the pandemic. Let's talk about the valuations of these REITs. There's something significant here. The expected long-term normalized valuation multiple and projected AFFO growth rates. All these numbers are outlined in the summary for each stock. Here's the gist. We're working on the assumption that these stocks will gradually trend toward their fair valuations. When we factor in the anticipated AFFO growth along with the dividends, we can forecast a total return. But hey, these returns aren't guaranteed. While we're confident these stocks will edge towards their fair values over the next few years, it might take lower interest rates before investors decide to boost REITs to significantly higher valuation multiples. That said, these figures paint a pretty vivid picture of how appealing the current valuations are. Let's dive into some specifics. Prologis is expected to deliver a total return of about 10% through 2025. The projection hinges on anticipated AFFO contraction in both 2023 and 2024. However, after 2024, the company's growth is expected to take a significant upswing. Now, Camden Property Trust stands out with an implied annual total return of 21%. That's mainly due to consistent AFFO growth coupled with a sharp decline in the stock price. Alexandria Real Estate? It's in the same ballpark, projecting a similar annual total return of 22%. That's all thanks to ongoing AFO growth, no expected contraction, and the fact that its stock price faced a sell-off, probably because investors unloaded everything connected to office real estate. Keep this in mind, though. R specializes in high-tech office buildings and research facilities for biotech and related companies. Its campuses aren't in direct competition with regular office real estate. That unique niche could be a factor to consider. Realty income is estimated to deliver an annual total return of 23%, and it's expected to sidestep any AFFO, adjusted funds from operations, contractions. If the company manages to grow its AFFO by about 3-4% each year, it's considered significantly undervalued. Similarly, Essex, much like the aforementioned choices, except for PLD, is projected to avoid AFFO contraction. 
returning to its normalized valuation at 22.7 XAFO could pave the way for solid 20% annual returns over the next few years. Avalon Bay Communities is also on track to yield over 20% as it moves toward a normalization in valuation. Of course, there are plenty of other REITs out there with resilient business models, robust balance sheets, and potential for strong performance. Our focus is on emphasizing the necessity of safety, especially considering the economic landscape that might not be as sturdy as it appears, particularly concerning financial default risks. Opting for quality doesn't mean sacrificing potential returns. By safeguarding against downside risks, investors can actually achieve superior returns while enjoying a steady stream of growing dividends. Many folks think that higher risk inherently leads to higher returns. While that might hold true in certain comparisons, like bonds versus stocks, when it comes to individual stocks, it doesn't always play out that way. The bottom line, prioritizing quality doesn't equate to compromising returns. It's a strategic move toward long-term wealth accumulation and financial outperformance. 